NCLEXRN practice exam number 5. Question 1. A nurse is administering 4 furosmi to a patient admitted with congestive heart failure. After the infusion, which of the following symptoms is an OT expected? A. Increased urinary output. B. Decreased edema. C. Decreased pain. D. Decreased blood pressure. Answer. C. Furosmide, a loop diuretic, does not alter pain. Furosmide acts on the kidneys to increase urinary output. Fluid may move from the periphery, decreasing edema. Fluid load is reduced, lowering blood pressure. Question 2. There are a number of risk factors associated with coronary artery disease. Which of the following is a modifiable risk factor? A. Obesity. B. Heredity. C. Gender. D. Age. Answer. A. Obesity is an important risk factor for coronary artery disease that can be modified by improved diet and weight loss. Family history of coronary artery disease, male gender, and advancing age increase risk but cannot be modified. Question 3. Tissue plasminogen activator TPA is considered for treatment of a patient who arrives in the emergency department following onset of symptoms of myocardial infarction. Which of the following is a contraindication for treatment with TPA? A. Worsening chest pain that began earlier in the evening. B. History of cerebral hemorrhage. C. History of prior myocardial infarction. D. Hypertension. Answer. B. A history of cerebral hemorrhage is a contraindication to TPA because it may increase the risk of bleeding. TPA acts by dissolving the clot blocking the coronary artery and works best when administered within 6 hours of onset of symptoms. Prior MI is not a contraindication to TPA. Pins receiving TPA should be observed for changes in blood pressure, as TPA may cause hypotension. Question 4. Following myocardial infarction, a hospitalized patient is encouraged to practice frequent leg exercises and ambulate in the hallway as directed by his physician. Which of the following choices reflects the purpose of exercise for this patient? A. Increases fitness and prevents future heart attacks. B. Prevents bed sores. C. Prevents DVTD vein thrombosis. D. Prevent constipations. Answer. C. Exercise is important for all hospitalized patients to prevent deep vein thrombosis. Muscular contraction promotes venous return and prevents hemostasis in the lower extremities. This exercise is not sufficiently vigorous to increase physical fitness nor is it intended to prevent bed sores or constipation. Question 5. A patient arrives in the emergency department with symptoms of myocardial infarction, progressing to cardiogenic shock. Which of the following symptoms should the nurse expect the patient to exhibit with cardiogenic shock? A. Hypertension. B. Bradycardia. C. Bounding pulse. D. Confusion. Answer. D. Cardiogenic shock severely impairs the pumping function of the heart muscle, causing diminished blood flow to the organs of the body. This results in diminished brain function and confusion, as well as hypotension, tachycardia, and weak pulse. 
cardiogenic shock is a serious complication of myocardial infarction with a high mortality rate. Question 6. A patient with a history of congestive heart failure arrives at the clinic complaining of dyspnea. Which of the following actions is the first the nurse should perform? A. Ask the patient to lie down on the exam table. B. Draw blood for chemistry panel and arterial blood gas ABG. C. Send the patient for a chest X-ray. D. Check blood pressure. Answer. DA patient with congestive heart failure and dyspnea may have pulmonary edema, which can cause severe hypertension. Therefore, taking the patient's blood pressure should be the first action. Lying flat on the exam table would likely worsen the dyspnea, and the patient may not tolerate it. Blood draws for chemistry and ABG will be required, but not prior to the blood pressure assessment. Question 7. A clinic patient has recently been prescribed nitroglycerin for treatment of angina. He calls the nurse complaining of frequent headaches. Which of the following responses to the patient is correct? A. Stop taking the nitroglycerin and see if the headaches improve. B. Go to the emergency department to be checked because nitroglycerin can cause bleeding in the brain. C. Headaches are a frequent side effect of nitroglycerin because it causes vasodilation. D. The headaches are unlikely to be related to the nitroglycerin, so you should see your doctor for further investigation. Answer. C. Nitroglycerin is a potent vasodilator and often produces unwanted effects such as headache, dizziness, and hypotension. Patients should be counseled, and the dose titrated, to minimize these effects. In spite of the side effects, nitroglycerin is effective at reducing myocardial oxygen consumption and increasing blood flow. The patient should not stop the medication. Nitroglycerin does not cause bleeding in the brain. Question 8. A patient received surgery and chemotherapy for colon cancer completing therapy three months previously, and she is now in remission. At a follow-up appointment, she complains of fatigue following activity and difficulty with concentration at her weekly bridge games. Which of the following explanations could account for her symptoms? A. The symptoms may be the result of anemia caused by chemotherapy. B. The patient may be immunosuppressed. C. The patient may be depressed. D. The patient may be dehydrated. Answer. A. Three months after surgery and chemotherapy the patient is likely to be feeling the after effects, which often includes anemia because of bone marrow suppression. There is no evidence that the patient is immunosuppressed and fatigue is not a typical symptom of immunosuppression. The information given does not indicate that depression or dehydration is a cause of her symptoms. Question 9. A clinic patient has a hemoglobin concentration of 10.8 grams per deciliter and reports sticking to a strict vegetarian diet. Which of the follow nutritional advice is appropriate? A. The diet is providing adequate sources of iron and requires no changes. B. The patient should add meat to her diet. A vegetarian diet is not advised. C. The patient should use iron cookware to prepare foods, such as dark green, leafy vegetables and legumes, which are high in iron. D. A cup of coffee or tea should be added to every meal. Answer. C. Normal hemoglobin values range from 11.5-15.0. This vegetarian patient is mildly anemic. 
when food is prepared in iron cooker as iron content is increased. In addition, dark green leafy vegetables, such as spinach and kale, and legumes are high in iron. Mild anemia does not require that animal sources of iron be added to the diet. Many non-animal sources are available. Coffee and tea increase gastrointestinal activity and inhibit absorption of iron. Question 10. A hospitalized patient is receiving packed red blood cells PRBCs for treatment of severe anemia. Which of the following is the most accurate statement? A. Transfusion reaction is most likely immediately after the infusion is completed. B. PRBCs are best infused slowly through 20G. 4 catheter. C. PRBCs should be flushed with a 5% dextro solution. D. A nurse should remain in the room during the first 15 minutes of infusion. Answer. Detransfusion reaction is most likely during the first 15 minutes of infusion, and a nurse should be present during this period. PRBCs should be infused through a 19G or larger 4 catheter to avoid slow flow, which can cause clotting. PRBCs must be flushed with 0.45% normal saline solution. Other intravenous solutions will hemolyze the cells. Question 11. A patient who has received chemotherapy for cancer treatment is given an injection of epodin. Which of the following should reflect the findings in a complete blood count CBC drawn several days later? A. An increase in neutrophil count. B. An increase in hematocrit. C. An increase in platelet count. D. An increase in serum iron. Answer. B. Putin is a form of erythropoidin, which stimulates the production of red blood cells, causing an increase in hematocrit. Epodin is given to patients who are anemic, often as a result of chemotherapy treatment. Epodin has no effect on neutrophils, platelets, or serum iron. Question 12. A patient is admitted to the hospital with suspected polycythemia vera. Which of the following symptoms is consistent with the diagnosis? A. Weight loss. B. Increased clotting time. C. Hypertension. D. Headaches. Answer. B. C. And D. Polycythemia vera is a condition in which the bone marrow produces too many red blood cells. This causes an increase in hematocrit and viscosity of the blood. Patients can experience headaches, dizziness, and visual disturbances. Cardiovascular effects include increased blood pressure and delayed clotting time. Weight loss is not a manifestation of polycythemia vera. Question 13. A nurse is caring for a patient with a platelet count of 20,000 per microliter. Which of the following is an important intervention? A. Observe for evidence of spontaneous bleeding. B. Limit visitors to family only. C. Give aspirin in case of headaches. D. Impose immune precautions. Answer. A platelet counts under 30,000 per microliter may cause spontaneous pitachi and bruising, particularly in the extremities. When the count falls below 15,000, spontaneous bleeding into the brain and internal organs may occur. Headaches may be assigned and should be watched for. Aspirin disables platelets and should never be used in the presence of thrombocytopenia. Thrombocytopenia does not compromise immunity. And there is no reason to limit visitors as long as any physical trauma is prevented. Question 14. 
A nurse in the emergency department assesses a patient who has been taking long-term corticosteroids to treat renal disease. Which of the following is a typical side effect of corticosteroid treatment? Note, more than one answer may be correct. A. Hypertension. B. Cochingoid features. C. Hyponatremia. D. Low serum albumin. Answer, A, B, and D side effects of corticosteroids include weight gain, fluid retention with hypertension, cochingoid features, a low serum albumin, and suppressed inflammatory response. Patients are encouraged to eat a diet high in protein, vitamins, and minerals and low in sodium. Corticosteroids cause hypernatremia, not hyponatremia. Question 15. A nurse is caring for patients in the oncology unit. Which of the following is the most important nursing action when caring for a neutropenic patient? A. Change the disposable mask immediately after use. B. Change gloves immediately after use. C. Minimize patient contact. D. Minimize conversation with the patient. Answer, B. The neutropenic patient is at risk of infection. Changing gloves immediately after use protects patients from contamination with organisms picked up on hospital surfaces. This contamination can have serious consequences for an immunocompromised patient. Changing the respiratory mask is desirable, but not nearly as urgent as changing gloves. Minimizing contact and conversation are not necessary and may cause nursing staff to miss changes in the patient's symptoms or condition. Question 16. A patient is undergoing the induction stage of treatment for leukemia. The nurse teaches family members about infectious precautions. Which of the following statements by family members indicates that the family needs more education? A. We will bring in books and magazines for entertainment. B. We will bring in personal care items for comfort. C. We will bring in fresh flowers to brighten the room. D. We will bring in family pictures and get well cards. Answer. C. During induction chemotherapy, the leukemia patient is severely immunocompromised and at risk of serious infection. Fresh flowers, fruit, and plants can carry microbes and should be avoided. Books, pictures, and other personal items can be cleaned with antimicrobials before being brought into the room to minimize the risk of contamination. Question 17. A nurse is caring for a patient with acute lymphoblastic leukemia ELL. Which of the following is the most likely age range of the patient? A. 3 to 10 years. B. 25 to 35 years. C. 45 to 55 years. D. Over 60 years. Answer. A. The peak incidence of ALL is at 4 years range 3 to 10. It is uncommon after the mid years. The peak incidence of chronic myelogenous leukemia CML is 45 to 55 years. The peak incidence of acute myelogenous leukemia AML occurs at 60 years. Two-thirds of cases of chronic lymphocytic leukemia CLL occur after 60 years. Question 18. A patient is admitted to the oncology unit for diagnosis of suspected Hodgkin's disease. Which of the following symptoms is typical of Hodgkin's disease? A. Painful cervical lymph nodes. B. Night sweats and fatigue. C. Nausea and vomiting. D. Weight gain.
Answer. B symptoms of Hodgkin's disease include night sweats, fatigue, weakness, and tachycardia. The disease is characterized by painless, enlarged cervical lymph nodes. Weight loss occurs early in the disease. Nausea and vomiting are not typically symptoms of Hodgkin's disease. Question 19. The Hodgkin's disease patient described in the question above undergoes a lymph node biopsy for definitive diagnosis. If the diagnosis of Hodgkin's disease were correct, which of the following cells would the pathologist expect to find? A. Reed Sternberg cells. B. Lymphoblastic cells. C. Gosha cells. D. Reader's cells. Answer. A. A definitive diagnosis of Hodgkin's disease is made if Reed Sternberg cells are found on pathologic examination of the excised lymph node. Lymphoblasts are immature cells found in the bone marrow of patients with acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Gosher cells are large storage cells found in patients with Gosher's disease. Reader cells are myeloblasts found in patients with acute myelogenous leukemia. Question 20. A patient is about to undergo bone marrow aspiration and biopsy and expresses fear and anxiety about the procedure. Which of the following is the most effective nursing response? A. Warn the patient to stay very still because the smallest movement will increase her pain. B. Encourage the family to stay in the room for the procedure. C. Stay with the patient and focus on slow, deep breathing for relaxation. D. Delay the procedure to allow the patient to deal with her feelings. Answer. C. Slow, deep breathing is the most effective method of reducing anxiety and stress. It reduces the level of carbon dioxide in the brain to increase calm and relaxation. Warning the patient to remain still will likely increase her anxiety. Encouraging family members to stay with the pain may make her worry about their anxiety as well as her own. Delaying the procedure is unlikely to allay her fears. Question 21. A six-year-old child with leukemia is hospitalized and is receiving combination chemotherapy. Laboratory results indicate that the child is neutropenic, and the nurse prepares to implement protective isolation procedures. Which interventions would the nurse initiate? Select all that apply. A. Restrict all visitors. B. Place the child on a low bacteria diet. C. Change dressings using sterile technique. D. Encourage the consumption of fresh fruits and vegetables. E. Perform meticulous hand washing before caring for the child. F. Allow fresh cut flowers in the room as long as they are kept in a vase with fresh water. Answer. B. C. And E. For the hospitalized neutropenic child, flowers or plants should not be kept in the room because standing water and damp soil harbor aspergillus and pseudomonas, to which these children are very susceptible. Fruits and vegetables not peeled before being eaten harbor molds and should be avoided until the white blood cell count rises. The child is placed on a low bacteria diet. Dressings are always changed with sterile technique. Not all visitors need to be restricted but anyone who is ill should not be allowed in the child's room. Meticulous hand washing is required before caring for the child. In addition, gloves, a mask, and a gown are worn per agency policy. Question 22. A 16-year-old child is brought to the emergency department by his mother with a complaint that the child just experienced a tonic-clonic seizure. On arrival in the emergency department no apparent seizures were occurring. The mother states that her son is taking medication for the seizure disorder. The nurse plans care, 
Knowing that which of the following medications are used for long-term control of tonic-clonic seizures? Select all that apply. A. Diazepam Valium. B. Alprazolam Xanax. C. Gabapentin Neurentin. D. Ethosuximide Xerentin. E. Carbamazepine Tegretol. F. Methylphenidate Ritalin. Answer. C. D. And E. Medications that are prescribed for long-term control of tonic-clonic seizures are gabapenin, ethosuximide, and carbamazepine. Diazepam is a medication that is prescribed to halt tonic-clonic episodes, and methylphenidate is a medication used to treat attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Both of these medications are not suitable for long-term control of a seizure condition. Alprazolam is a medication used to treat anxiety. Question 23. A child has been diagnosed with meningococcal meningitis. Which of the following isolation techniques is appropriate? A. Enteric precautions. B. Neutropenic precautions. C. No precautions are required as long as antibiotics have been started. D. Isolation precautions for at least 24 hours after the initiation of antibiotics. Answer. D. Meningococcal meningitis is transmitted primarily by droplet infection. Isolation is begun and maintained for at least 24 hours after antibiotics are given. Other options are incorrect. Question 24. A client enters the emergency department confused, twitching, and having seizures. His family states he recently was placed on corticosteroids for arthritis and was feeling better in exercising daily. On data collection, he has flushed skin, dry mucous membranes, an elevated temperature, and poor skin turgor. His serum sodium level is 172 mcl. Choose the interventions that the healthcare provider would likely prescribe. Select all that apply. A. Monitor intake and output. B. Monitor vital signs. C. Maintain sodium reduced diet. D. Monitor electrolyte levels. E. Increase water intake orally. F. Administer sodium replacements. Answer. A, B, C, D, and E. Hypernatremia is described as having a serum sodium level that exceeds 145 mcl. Signs and symptoms would include dry mucous membranes, loss of skin turgor, thirst, flushed skin, elevated temperature, oliguria, muscle twitching, fatigue, confusion, and seizures. Interventions include monitoring fluid balance, monitoring vital signs, reducing dietary intake of sodium, monitoring electrolyte levels, and increasing oral intake of water. Sodium replacement therapy would not be prescribed for a client with hypernatremia. Question 25. A client has died, and a nurse asks a family member about the funeral arrangements. The family member refuses to discuss the issue. The nurse's appropriate action is to A. Show acceptance of feelings. B. Provide information needed for decision making. C. Suggest a referral to a mental health professional. D. Remain with the family member without discussing funeral arrangements. Answer. D. The family member is exhibiting the first stage of grief denial, and the nurse should remain with the family member. 
showing acceptance of feelings is an appropriate intervention for the acceptance or reorganization and restitution stage. Providing information needed for decision-making may be an appropriate intervention for the bargaining stage. Suggesting a referral to a mental health professional may be an appropriate intervention for depression. Thanks for watching. Please comment, like, and share.